What's up, fam? Good morning. Uh, so a week ago, I posted a bunch of Never Bloomberg videos and uh, how he's worse than Trump and and uh, etc. like that. And I feel like a week ago, a lot of people were disagreeing that are now agreeing. A, a lot's happened in the last week. Uh, if, if you weren't aware, uh, Bloomberg is now first in two states and tied with Bernie for a third. And in the poll that just came out today, he is second in national polling. That's the bad news. The good news is Sanders is crushing it. He's the clear front runner, and nobody else has any chance of taking him down except for Bloomberg. He is the only threat. So don't waste time attacking the booty judge supporters and the club, which are supporters and the Biden supporters. Trust me. They're not. They, they're no threat. In fact, we need them to split uh, Bloomberg's vote. If if they're not going to vote for Sanders, then they need to be splitting Bloomberg's vote. So that's that's just a good thing. Uh, but the the good there's this poll that came out for Nevada, which hasn't Nevada. I don't know. It, it they haven't had much polling yet, but they had two polls come out, and the one a few days ago was Sanders plus seven, which is good. It's not outside of the margin of Riggable because he was leading by like seven points in both Iowa and New Hampshire, and they ended up like this close. <clears throat> so don't get complacent. We need to, we need a landslide video uh, victory. Uh, the one that came out today had him plus nineteen points, which I'm a little skeptical of. I don't know. I, I didn't have time to look into the methodology of that poll, uh, but it's it's a good sign if, if nothing else. And leading by, I think it was seven points nationally, which is huge. But again, Bloomberg is rapidly creeping. He's got a ton of positive media coverage and he's got a, a ton of money. He's hiring all the best staffers. He's bribing influencers. He's uh, flooding the market with ads. And uh, that's kind of brings me what I wanted to talk about today. Because I've had several people tell me things like literally, literally quoting, you can't buy votes. It's like, wait a second. Of course you can. Why would anybody support Bloomberg otherwise? People are not perfect ration, reasoning agents that have access to all information. Uh, a lot of people are in different echo chambers and a lot of older people are in a mainstream media echo chamber because they sit and watch TV all day. So all they hear is the MSNBC and CNN opinion segments, and then they see Bloomberg ads. And if you're in that world, he looks great. Let's be honest. And if you're not very critical, that's what you're going to see. So yes, you can buy votes. And the only question is, can you buy enough votes? Because Bloomberg has no charisma. He has a massive trove of, of scandals. Uh, I'm going to have to see if I can do a video that can encapsulate all of his scandals because the list is so long. But there, there's no question. There's no reasonable question. He's racist. He's an oligarch. And he's GOP. I mean, he, he was a GOP mayor and then independent and then Democratic. And But his beliefs haven't changed He's still the same person. He was defending stop and frisk last year. So, and, and the only thing he's been consistent on his whole life is protecting big money interests. So, the the, the real problem is uh, how how can democracy survive when you can buy votes? When people are so susceptible to influence, uh, then the people with the most influence, the people with the most money that can buy influence, control the government. And this is what I've been saying for years. The biggest problem in U.S. politics is oligarchy. It's the fact that a handful of rich people have outsized influence. And the scary thing is most people don't even see that. When I was debating Adam Friended, he didn't seem to think they had that much influence. You know, they, they sure they're rich, but, you know, do they control our government? 
Well, yes, they do. And they have think tanks, and they buy ads, and they buy media platforms. And uh, the, the, the only reason 90% of conservatives are conservatives is because of oligarchs and their money. And, and that's a project for another day, but it, it's pretty easily demonstrable. You just need some time to put all the sources together. But uh, the, I've seen a lot of sources about how uh, different sources bought out pastors and key people in the evangelical movement and started selling this whole like pro-life thing was like it, pro-life wasn't an issue until oligarchs saw its potential and had think tanks that propped up pastors that started preaching about it and making it a huge issue so now a huge amount of the gop just votes on that one issue and you can't reach them on anything else because of that one issue so I've been planning on doing a series for quite a while, which is the only solution I can think of to this problem of how democracy can function when people are so easily influenced. And the, the, the only answer is critical thinking. It's learning and teaching people how to be more skeptical and how to, to uh, break down arguments and how to see, how to test them, how to look for evidence, how to be skeptical of claims that come in instead of just default believing things. Um, because that's, it, it's an important life skill. It, if you're good at it, then you, you won't fall for uh, advertising on stuff that you don't need. You won't fall uh, for, for scams. And you won't fall for politicians who are trying to lie to you. So uh, that's something I put a lot of thought into. And uh, hopefully you'll bear with me on this project. It's not the most exciting thing to everybody. But I want to start from the, the foundation of, of uh, which where to start from is its own conversation, but we'll be talking about epistemology and values, and then some basic heuristics of critical thinking. Uh, most of the critical thinking resources I've seen, they get uh, far too much into depth with uh, formal logic and stuff that like you start losing people. Uh, but we can keep it pretty simple. There, there, there are some shortcuts to critical thinking that will keep you right most of the time, probabilistically that they, they work. And, uh, you know, like uh, Michael Jackson said, you want to change the world, start with the person in the mirror. It's true. Uh, let's work on making ourselves better, learning critical thinking, and, and, and find somebody young and mentor them in critical thought and how important it is, you know. Uh, if you have kids, then make sure they're being trained. Because here's the thing, we're not going to have critical thinking taught in school until a reasonable segment of the population has retaken our government. And we're pretty far out from that happening. Uh, even if Bernie wins, it's going to be like a, a term or two until, I mean, we have to have Congress, we have to have state legislatures, we have to win school boards, all kinds of stuff in order to change the actual education system. Uh, but it's the only way you can have a functioning democracy. This isn't a functioning democracy. I mean, if, you, if anyone ever doubts this, one fact I think is all you need to prove that this is not a functioning uh, democracy. And that is that 90% of the population wants to have universal background checks on gun purchases. And the House passed that like a year or two ago, and it still sits on Mitch McConnell's desk. One guy is denying the will of 90% of the people. This is not a functioning democracy. Now, fortunately, we still have the chance to change it through democratic means, and the more of us show up to vote for Bernie Sanders, the harder it is for them to rig it without making it obvious. Look how obvious it was in Iowa. Pretty bad in New Hampshire, too. If you, if you look at breakdowns, all of the, there's like 10 counties... Seven of them did hand-counted ballots, and Bernie won by, like, he was, like, 5 or 10%. It was a huge margin ahead. But there's three counties that were tabulated by machines, and those ones, uh, Buttigieg won by a decent enough margin to make the final tally pretty so narrow. So, the, the, basically, the more people vote for Bernie Sanders, the, e the harder it is for them to hide the fact that they're rigging it. It's so bad right now. I don't know if you know this. Uh, somebody, I think it was in the UK Parliament, stood up in Parliament and was talking about how if we if we saw any other country with the signs of failing democracy like we see the US, we would be like sanctioning them. 
we would talk about how authoritarian it is and how they're screwing with, with democracy. But since it's the U.S., we were silent. This is like other countries can see how, how clear that this is. This is great because we need people to know how fucked up this is in order to fix it. So that's why you need to vote for Bernie Sanders. It, if the harder they try to stop him from winning, the worse it looks for the establishment and the more will we'll have to change the system. So, yes, keep fighting for Bernie Sanders. And I'm going to start releasing different segments of a kind of critical thinking course, which hopefully you're interested in. Hopefully it gives you some tools to teach other people and ourselves because we are where it starts with. Uh, the, the first principle of critical thinking is fallibilism. It's kind of like intellectual humility. We need to realize that we can be wrong and that if we are wrong, we want to know. So think about that. If you, if you were wrong on something you believe, would you want to know? Even if it's something like a, a core tenant of your worldview, would you want to know? Well, I would. Truth matters. Uh, so hopefully you do too. And we'll talk more about that in the future. Thank you so much.